I'm Stephen Hart, I'm a co-founder of Holographic Optical Technologies and I'm the primary inventor of our technology. A true hologram is a three-dimensional image in which there is light at every point in space. Holography, other techniques hadn't worked. I found a technique that allows us to take very large quantities of data, many, many slices in the CT scan, for example, and combine them into one accurate hologram that shows that information precisely and correctly. A transmission hologram is one where you light it from behind instead of in front. Most holograms you'll have seen hang on a wall with a light in front of them. The trouble with that is that you can't pick it up and move it around. If a surgeon wants to carry it into the operating room, they can't do that. If we want to build it into a product, a, a child's toy, you can't do that. By lighting from behind with transmission light, we can build it into something, we can build it into a box, into a device. That allows it to be portable, and because it's self-contained, we can totally control the light, so we can be very accurate. The first patent we filed on this was rejected. The patent examiner looked at the literature and found papers that said you can't do this. I hadn't known that. I had not been a practicing holographer. My background was in astrophysics. So when I had tried to do this, I'd use different parameters going in a different direction from what every other holographer had done. By doing that, I found a domain where we can accurately record huge quantities of information. Because the way that we record a true hologram is actually recording the structure of light at a submicron scale, we have huge amounts of information packed into that hologram. If you tried to look at that on a conventional TV display, uh, you would either have to shrink it so that it was minuscule, far too small to see, or you would have to have thousands of TVs just to carry that amount of information. If you look at a standard HD television, you're looking at a couple of million pixels. If you look at a very high resolution uh, advanced uh, smartphone, you might be looking at something approaching 4 million pixels. If you wanted to measure the information content of our holograms in the same manner, we would be talking about trillions of pixels, not billions, trillions. One of the exciting things we've developed over the last few years is animated holograms. These are still true three-dimensional holograms, but they change with time. They can respond to you. The process works very well for medical because medical directly produces accurate three-dimensional information that we can print directly. We can take every slice from a CT scan or an MR scan and lay it back in space at its correct position and you see the entire structure, the entire organ of the patient reassembled in three dimensions accurately. Accuracy is incredibly important in medical imaging. A surgeon needs to know that if they measure a distance as 3.2 millimeters, it is exactly that. We have submillimeter accuracy and we guarantee that by taking the dimensions straight from the DICOM data, straight from the data from the scanner, and ensuring that we exactly match that all the way through the production system. We match the physical geometry so that everything is the right way around and exactly the right size, but we also match the grayscale. It's really important that if an area of bone looks darker, in the CT scan that it will look darker in the hologram. That may be very clinically important. It may be indicating erosion of that bone. We can't change the grayscale any more than we can change the geometry. Both have to be exactly right. The patient just is shown the regular scans slice by slice on a computer screen or on a wall of film. They don't really understand what's being diagnosed. They don't really understand what's being proposed. Informed consent comes when you understand the data and you do that immediately when you see it reassembled in a hologram because it is life-size, it is accurate, it allows you to see exactly what the condition is. Let me give you an example. I was present when a mother and her young child were being shown the hologram. The three-year-old daughter put her finger into the brain tumor and said, Mommy, is this the bad thing? Now that's informed consent. We've seen many cases where a physician changes their entire approach because of seeing it in the hologram. They've already looked at the conventional presentations of the CAT scans, but when they see the hologram, they suddenly say, ah, I understand there's this fracture that I have to deal with. There's this piece of bone that I have to move and reattach. Uh, we've had cases in uh, really complex surgeries, such as the separation of conjoined twins, where as a result of seeing the hologram, they realized that there were planning to cut too close to some of the major blood vessels in the brain and you can see in the subsequent hologram that they've actually cut off to the side of that to avoid that. 
I think one of the most impressive holograms I've worked on was a neurosurgical application. I talked to the surgeon after the procedure and he had not wanted to cut any deeper into this patient's brain, but looking at the hologram, which he knew he could trust, he saw he needed to go about three millimeters further. He cut down those extra three millimeters, he found the vessel he was looking for, he cured the patient. Our print system is very robust very controlled, fully automatic. So one of the things that's exciting coming up, we'll be able to install that at hospitals, at clinical application sites around the country, so they can do on-site instant production of their own holographic needs. The way we print holograms is that we optically position an image of every depth within the data set in front of a film and we record a true classic conventional optical hologram of that slice at that position. So if we have 30 slices of CT data, we move that image 30 times in space, each typically a few millimeters apart, matching the distance between the slices and the patient, and we really record holograms of all of that data, true three-dimensional holograms. Printing the holograms is a very sensitive process. Uh, to make it work, we actually isolate the equipment on a ton of optical table floated on air, and all of our machinery is built on top of that. If any of our equipment moved by as much as a millionth of an inch during the recording procedure, we wouldn't record a hologram. The mastering process that goes behind that, that we do in our production facility, is very complex. It is very technically intense, it involves quite a bit of software and an inordinate amount of hardware. But the end result, the final hologram, can be low cost, we can mass produce those, and those can be used almost anywhere. Historically, it's been very difficult to do accurate colors in holography and to have them stay accurate as you move around. Many of the techniques out there as you move up and down, the color will change. We've achieved a technique which allows an image plane transmission hologram. That's a hologram that is actually uh, in, positioned anywhere we want in space and yet has accurate full color. We can Pantone match a, a logo. We can match the, the, the color of uh, anything that we need to in that hologram very accurately. And it stays accurate even as you look around it. Because these are true holograms, one of the fascinating features is you can take it and you can turn it over and you will see the patient from the other side just as if you'd taken the real patient and turned them over. The hologram doesn't lie, it shows you exactly what has been recorded, which is exactly what was scanned by the scanner. The largest transmission hologram that I'm aware of is one that we made for a museum. It's six feet by six feet and the data projects out four feet into space. The hologram we made for the museum shows a small piece of the sky, about 3,000 stars, all of which have planets, all of which have been discovered just in the last few years. The hologram was made so that an entire family could stand in front of it, see all those stars, in fact walk into that star field. That hologram is actually 6,000 light years from front to back, and as you walk towards it at normal walking speed, you're doing warp factor 9.9 .9 in standard Star Trek terminology.